All right, so uh, I'm going to actually zoom in nice and tight on this wood block. Um, we want to be able to see this grain. So if I came down and said, okay, I'm going to turn on my bump map. That's something I want to use. And, and uh, the way to think about it is this is something that pushes and pulls that image back and forth from the surface of this box. I mean, really, Rhino just sees this as a cube. Uh, it's V-Ray that's applying this material to it. So I'm going to click M for map. I'm going to say I'm going to use a bitmap. Uh, I've got to select my bitmap file. Uh, for me, I just went ahead and put it on the desktop. And here it is. It's a, it's just a wood, and I named it bump. What I did was take the exact file that was used as the, the diffuse color, took it through Photoshop, and made it black and white. And then I played with the contrast. You see it's it's really sharp. This is It's white with black. So now what that's going to do, it's going to push and pull that material slightly. Uh, and again, like white would be the closest, and black would be the furthest. And we're able to to change kind of the multiplier again. Let's see what this would. It would really make it white. If I said to 0.25, it should make it really dark. So we'll leave it at one. Um, and we're, our our repeat is exactly we want it to be the same as the diffuse. That's really important. So it matches up. If you if you have a bump map that doesn't match your diffuse map it's not going to look right. Your grains wouldn't align. So I remember that it was 4, 4, my rotation was 0, so this will match the same diffuse as before. So if I apply that and we look here, we might be able to see a little bit of a difference. It's obviously taking longer to render, and you can see these are really deep, in this gritty grain here. So clearly we have too much um, kind of effect uh, in place here. So let's see if we, uh, if there's a way we can control that. Um, yeah, come back in maps. There's my grain. Um, map channel environment. Let's override. Maybe if we lower this down, it's a little darker. That was gamma override. We don't we don't need to mess with that. What's our blur or tile? Mini map, sure. So let's lower the multiplier on how much. So we're all fairly dark there. Let's see if we're. It's always a good idea to preview it instead of just doing the rendering. Then you end up, you know, wasting all this time. All right, so it's maybe a little better. Let's give it another shot at a point one. Apply here, update there. All right, it's it's starting to calm down a little bit. It's still pretty grainy, but let's go ahead and give this a shot. See what we're coming up with. So it's rendering. You can see just by changing that one effect, we've increased our rendering time. It's it's much more difficult. Uh, the computer program's got to figure out. You can see how the light starts to to be bouncing off the grain of the wood. It's not nearly as smooth as it was before. You can really see that here at the top. If we came back here and changed this again, and maybe we want 0.05, so it's even half of that grain. Um, let's zoom really close in here and see if we can really see that depth. Yeah, there, you know, you're really starting to see kind of the nitty gritty of that. Uh, and that's just, you know, one thing to consider when you're going for maybe more photorealistic renderings. Uh, it, it's not something that's really required. I mean, if I took that off and I, I render this again, it's going to render quickly. Um, and I couldn't really say that it's, you know, that much worse than the bump map. But there are times where a bump map is useful. Similarly, there's a displacement map. Uh, this is used, you know, kind of on a higher level. I've used it before for bark and really pushing things. You can use it for terrain and really push mountains of earth up and down. Uh, this isn't always small scale stuff. It can be used at a much, much higher level. Um, so in the next uh, kind of tutorial here, we'll be looking at changing output sizes and uh, kind of working with compositions of cameras. And that's, that's all done in Rhino with a composition uh, and then set it up and running it through V-Ray to kind of get that final rendering effect. Uh, we'll also look at uh, the ability to kind of use some presets in uh, V-Ray to achieve, you know, higher level resolution.